Uh, welcome to Everyday Economics, Dr. Jivshi. Thank you so much for taking our time. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, let me start immediately by asking about the latest GDP estimates for the July-September quarter that were released by the government last week. They seem to have generated a lot of relief about the state of the economy because uh, the although there's a contraction, it's not as severe as was being talked about. Uh, and we see this sense of relief, especially among amateur commentators. In your expert view, what is the information and insights that these estimates contain and provide to us? Uh, what do we know about the impact of the virus on the economy from the estimates and from other sources of information? And if you could also talk about the points, if any, to bear in mind while, interpre while interpreting the uh, quarterly estimates. Uh, sure. I think the quarterly estimates, uh, first of all, are the first estimates and they are subject to a lot of uh, revision going ahead because as and when more information becomes available, uh, these estimates will be fine-tuned. Uh, but having, I, I think, uh, keeping that aside, uh, focusing on the second quarter uh, numbers that came out, well, the GDP print of uh, minus 7.5% for the second quarter uh, is better than uh, most recent consensus estimates and also uh, better than our initial estimate, which was minus uh, 12%. So, and I think there were some indications that things were uh, turning out to be a little better than what was expected, particularly in the in the months of uh, month of September. High frequency data, which I think everybody resorts to these days, whether it is the Google mobility or the tax collections uh, uh, or power consumption, I think they were pointing towards uh, towards. Uh, some sort of a recovery but yeah the final print uh, did come as a pleasant surprise uh, and uh, there were four reasons uh, of why GDP improved I think first of all number one there was pent-up demand the activities were not allowed in the first quarter so there was uh, there was demand which uh, which needed to be satisfied and that actually was that pushed the demand uh, the, the consumption demand up uh, not aggregate but for certain categories of goods and services and that that got reflected particularly in the auto sector uh, then i think there has been a continuous support to the economy from agriculture so agriculture was expected to do well and it did well uh, then i think the to some extent the manufacturing data uh, was much better than most expected there there have been cost savings for the corporates which typically get reflected in the value addition which the gdp measures and finally, I think uh, uh, the, we are also learning to live with the virus and I think uh, conducting our business in the midst of the virus, uh, I think. So all these four factors did create and uh, uh, led to an improvement in GDP, but uh, GDP was far better than expected, I think. And the reason for that is that uh, uh, one, we are still trying to learn about the impact of COVID-19 on the economy and expectations get shaped by what we experienced since we ex uh, experienced a very sharp contraction in the first quarter. So the expectations generally were, were much, much uh, muted. And uh, manufacturing, as I said, turned out to be uh, a bit of a surprise element because the industrial production, I mean, the total volume of uh, manufacturing output, for instance, was showing a contraction of 6.8 percent in in the second quarter but uh, what the gdp measures is value added which is somewhat different i mean if you uh, it's a component of overall top line but if you save on cost then i think the value added component uh, uh, does does better and that is what gets uh, for instance, you uh, the companies faced lower input costs, I think lower wage costs also to some extent. As a result, I think the value added part appeared uh, uh, overall uh, uh, as, as a mix of all this appeared. I think this this showed up in, in value added, which, uh, which which turned out to be a little better than what the volume indicators were, were, were showing up. Uh, I think the uh, one caveat though, I think the, 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 the manufacturing data, for instance, doesn't capture the unregistered sector properly. And I think uh, from uh, from anecdotal evidence, we know that the unorganized manufacturing, unregistered manufacturing has been hit hard. So there must be some, uh, some uh, upward bias in these estimates, which could get corrected uh, uh, going ahead. I think what we also very interesting uh, observation from data that I was I was just going through uh, is that uh, in the first quarter, if you saw the manufacturing and industry were hit extremely hard and services was hit, but not to that extent. 
and now in the second quarter we see normalization which uh, which is uh, the as per our expectation the services typically take much longer to recover they i think uh, they 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 get hit harder because there are many contact based services but manufacturing doesn't face that i think the, the challenge is in production and after that i think the contact uh, is is only one time now what happened in the first quarter was the manufacturing activity came down very sharply because the the it was not permitted i mean the, we had more than 40 day uh, very stringent lockdown uh, and services uh, uh, still i think uh, some of them are government services they they did uh, uh, they did continue but in the second quarter the the manufacturing bumped up very quickly bounced back because the those activities were allowed but services which suffers from many anxieties which people have uh particularly for uh, for services like hotels restaurants etc uh the, the consumption uh, remains muted and i think now what we are what is what we are seeing in the second quarter is what we will see in the rest of the uh, year as well that that manufacturing will be somewhat better than uh, the, the 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 services sector which will which will continue to to remain uh, weak in my in my judgment what you're saying is the difference between the impact of the government policy on lockdowns and therefore manufacturing versus the difference in the demand side from consumers uh, because of changed behaviors uh, uh, changed demand pattern for service sector and therefore services will take longer to recover am yes. i right Yeah. yeah and in the first quarter i think it was the supply shock you were not allowed in the yeah. second quarter it is the demand which is now beginning to play out yeah. demand for manufacturing being somewhat uh, higher than services and i think just to add to that what also played out was since you were not consuming many services or did not want to because of the risk i think for some categories of income uh, uh, the the people had some extra money which they diverted towards either towards savings or towards the buying manufacturing items and i think that probably got reflected in in the automobile demand and the the very exuberant stock markets also added to the wealth effect of some, some people uh, right right i just want to before i go to the next question i just want you to explain a little more to my lay listeners about what you said on you know how uh the difference between what the uh, iip which is industrial production was showing versus what the gdp estimates show because that one is a volume indicator and the other is a uh, value addition how why is it that uh, gdp which is value addition uh, uh shows a different um, uh, growth uh, uh, growth rate Yeah. a better growth rate so i think i will use an analogy of a company though they are not strictly comparable for i think uh, uh, for the ease of understanding uh, for a corporate let's say when they present their uh, their results i think there is a top line which is the overall sales and there is a profit margin right which is yeah. uh, subtracting your whatever costs you incur in production now if the if if your top line is let's assume is not growing uh, uh, that fast but you incur a lot of cost savings then what will happen is that the 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 value added which is a component which is the difference between the top line and the input cost i think uh, will will appear to be little uh, uh, will be much better than i think the the so i think in in nutshell the 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 overall revenues may not rise that much uh, uh, for for a company but its profit margin can improve and gdp is uh, is value added which is closer to the to the profit margin because the input costs had reduced the wage costs uh, i think uh, also got reduced now as a combination of all this the 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 overall uh, uh, value added number looked somewhat better this is i think what we we don't have the data on input costs as of now but i think what we what we look when we look at the corporates when we look at how things are playing out and how the margins of companies are getting uh, are reported we see that the, mar- the the earnings have been the margins have been much much better than what was expected earlier and that to some extent is getting reflected in 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 the in the in the manufacturing value added which is gdp it's a little technical i think but uh, the the overall drift is that that the the if you want to sustain your uh, value added uh, or, or gdp in the long term i think the top line will also have to uh, will also have to grow i mean uh, you cannot uh, continuously improve uh, on the basis of reduced input costs i think this is this is this can be a one time lift 
but it's it's not going to sustain so eventually the overall uh, volumes will also have to grow as fast so which means that the gap between the uh, gdp and the uh, index of industrial production growth i think will narrow going ahead and i think there the important thing also would be uh, people's incomes because uh, ultimately what matters is people's incomes and that's uh, you know that's why i think the inequality effects of uh this current covid crisis uh become important i know there's no evidence available yet there's no data on inequality effects but broadly speaking i wanted to ask you uh, what do you think the inequality impact is likely to be you already spoke about the unorganized sector versus organized sector impact and uh, when we talk of uh, inequality inflation becomes important uh, inflation is very high it has been consistently high and uh, you know high inflation hurts the poor much more than it hurts the middle class or the rich uh, the ability of poor people to absorb these shocks is low and if inflation remains high for long periods of time then there can be consequences for them which they cannot uh, uh, quickly come out of even when inflation is eventually brought under control so of course there are implications not just for the poor but the whole economy and policy making uh, when inflation remains high over a long period of time so if you could you know talk about uh, both of these aspects a bit yeah so i think let me begin with inequality i think which you broadly which i think it can be of different kinds it can be between countries uh, it can be between uh, uh, firms it can be between households uh it can be bit i mean so you, there are various ways in which so what i'm saying is that there is a two speed kind of a economy emerging and not everybody some are benefiting others are losing out and uh, for instance the larger firms uh, if you look at the the the, uh, the firm level data you'll find that the larger firms are doing much better because they have more uh, uh, more firepower they have more buffer to sustain themselves and they are doing better uh, right now compared to the smaller firms uh then i think the what we also uh, find is that uh, that that workers uh, uh, from uh, who have work from home options uh, for instance and uh, many of them earn higher wages compared to uh, the 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 blue collar workers uh in the brick and mortar economy so there is the the, the incomes of uh, of those the first ones people working from home etc to a great extent protected but the blue collar workers i think they they face uh, uh, much more uh, much more hardship so the gap between the two modes of production i think uh, um, increases uh, and i think there is some evidence not for india but i think uh, for, uh, uh, in general i think the world economic forum had mentioned a few days back that uh, what they found was that women poor elderly uh disabled and migrant population they have suffered uh, the most i think out of uh, out of uh, out of the pandemic and the measures that were initially taken to contain the uh, contain the pandemic i think so that's so that again tells you that this is uh, and then obviously i think uh, extending it to countries uh, the the rich countries have too much firepower to uh, or 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 fiscal room so to say to to support spend uh, and support the people and the economy but poorer countries are do not have that kind of uh, so the divergence between rich and poor countries in terms of per capita income can temporarily uh, temporarily rise so uh, i think uh, it's 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 very very obvious that there is this uh, there is uh, uh, there is what many refer to as a k shape recovery i think that's a new new term that that i heard during this this pandemic for instance i think the economy gdp is going down but the stock markets are going up so how do you explain that i mean so and so people who are connected to the markets i think they will they are right now gaining i mean compared to the people who are connected to the brick and mortar sectors so there are various shades in which the 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 uh, the, the gap between uh, uh, between one class of people and the other class of people will seem to emerge or between one sector and the other sector will will continue to emerge for instance i mean if you take people who are working in hotel tourism and entertainment i think they will suffer uh, much more i mean compared to people who are working in in let's say in the auto sector for instance i mean so clearly government uh, yeah i mean go- government is uh, yeah the government salary <laughs> is protected i mean although yeah, i think there com- were some cuts here so in in different shades and now i think uh, uh, coming to uh, coming to your uh, i think you had mentioned poor i mean how how now what happens is when inflation goes up i think it reduces the ability of the people to generally consume i mean 
because just to give you just to give you one example uh, we did some back of the envelope calculations uh, if you look at the fiscal 2019-20 the overall private uh, consumption expenditure which is the spending on goods and services of all the households taken together in india was about 123 lakh crores in nominal uh, rupee terms now if what we found was if you do a simple simulation i pushed the the inflation uh, up by one percentage points the overall final consumption expenditure uh, goes up by 1.3 lakh crores uh, and if you if you just to relate it to the food uh, if uh, if there is one percentage point increase in food inflation which means that let's say the food inflation is at six percent it goes to seven percent now that pushes up the food bill bill of the nation by thirty three thousand crores so i think uh, the the high food uh, inflation high inflation and that too stemming from food side is not good for people who have a larger share of food in their consumption basket which is typically the 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 the, the lower income uh, categories as you move down from higher income uh, groups to lower income groups you find that the proportion of money that they spend on on uh, or their income spent they spend on food uh, also rises so clearly this is not good but i think here uh, i would say that the the government's uh, focus initially to distribute food grains i think would have provided uh, buffer for the very poor people and i think people who are who can who can get uh, subsidized uh, uh, food so it it did uh, it did help uh, but overall i think sustenance of high that is that's the reason why you want inflation to remain uh, in a predictable in a in a in a, in a narrow band and uh, and right now i think if you if you look at the contours of inflation it is largely food led i mean if you uh, if you if you see vegetables which is i think which every year happens once or twice uh, depending and it's weather related by the way uh, the 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 onion and potato they did suffer from uh, from uh, from a very high uh, i think uh, impact of 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 weather on 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 these these crops and their cropping cycles are small so onion and potato prices shot up now they seem to be coming down a bit because there is i think uh, the imports have been allowed and i think import duties have also been uh, cut for i think for potato uh, the more worrying part is uh, is the protein part now uh, and within that i think if you look at uh, 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 the animal protein versus the vegetable protein both of them are seeing very very high inflation pulses uh, is the source of protein for vegetarians i think the the supply has been very uh, patchy uh, there is uh, there is a impact of excess rains uh, that has played out on pulses even this year and there are very few avenues of uh, of uh, of import so pulses inflation could remain remain high as far as the animal inflation which is meat eggs fish etc is concerned now that was also i think uh, but there is a demand supply mismatch there because initially the the demand was hit people didn't want to consume animal proteins because they thought birds were a source of uh, of of virus uh, and and so the supply uh, demand for these uh, eggs and fish uh, uh, eggs and uh, poultry etc came down very sharply and as a result of that investments were few in these segments and now i think when when people gain confidence and their demand return to normal the supply is is suffering so supply will take 3 to 4 to 5 months to catch up and uh, till that time i think we will see high high uh, high inflation in animal protein so i think this is this and protein is an important part of a diet particularly during a pandemic so it 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 is a cause of worry the good news that we have on 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 food inflation is that the cereals which is rice and wheat i think we have enough stocks and uh, good production so i think at least the cereal inflation is 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 pretty benign uh, so clearly there are shades of uh, uh, shades of different shades of uh, inflation that are playing out within different uh, categories of food items so carbohydrates are uh, are not the prices are not rising as fast as those of proteins and uh, <clears throat> so so let, i think the my uh, our sense is that inflation will nudge down but it's not going to nudge down to the comfort levels of rbi uh, very quickly i mean so it will become a constraint uh, for not only from from the point of view of, uh, of 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 hurting the poor but also from the point of view of rbi's ability to 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 support the economy uh they have they are not cutting interest rates but i think so far they have said that they'll be very accommodative which means that they will try to keep interest rates low through 
through pumping liquidity etc into the into the economy uh, but yeah it does it does act as a barrier to barrier to growth because if you have to spend more for food then i think you will you will have less left to spend for other items and i also uh, you know want to ask you uh, non food inflation in fact has been above 5.5% for many months now and uh, overall inflation has been uh, above 6% for uh, um, three quarters and uh, last uh, i mean the fourth uh, the uh, the december quarter last year in 2019 it was about 5.6 to 5.8% so just you know just under 6% when inflation remains so high for so long then it is going to slowly become generalized inflation even when especially when you have a supply side situation going on due to the pandemic even if you have a demand uh, shock uh, um, in in such a situation inflation is going to be problematic and tricky for rbi and they cannot uh, you know they cannot uh, Uh, i mean how easy is it for them to say that because growth is so low we are going to focus more on growth yeah i think you are right that non food has also remained high but i think there is it, there are some idiosyncratic factors also i think if you look at the core inflation which is non food non uh, i think to some extent non uh, fuel, fuel. Uh, though although it has uh, it has the elements of petrol and diesel in it i think the the increase in the price of petrol and diesel because of government taxation, taxation. and gold is also a part of it and gold prices we know uh, all know have shot through the uh, roof and gold prices are not determined within the within the country hmm. but nevertheless i think it is it is it is impacting the the the, the non food non fuel part of the uh, part of the inflation uh that i think is is completely uh, and uh, imported inflation i think my worry is that with the recovery with the taking place now in china etc the prices of commodities etc have also started rising uh, steel etc and so the input costs for the firms which were which were helping them maintain a higher value added in the first quarter may not may not be that supportive in the sec uh, in, in the in the in the in, in the in the second quarter sorry may not be that supportive in the third quarter because the input costs some of them have gone up is good that at least the cereals we have enough stocks i mean so the base some one basic uh, uh, stuff is is there and and government is also i think uh, the 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 distribution of food grains i think is also helping i mean i think some pulses were also distributed as a part of that yes. so that so that comes as a support i mean so that's that's yes. been a very good policy move i mean uh, though overall fiscal room so to say is is limited with the with us and uh, what happens is during a pandemic kind of a situation to reach the last mile it's the fiscal policy that plays a more important role than the monetary policy although monetary policy is required to uh, to support fiscal policy during such times and it's doing it across the world but last mile issues can be sorted more through 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 direct support i mean which is fiscal in nature and not so much monetary what do we know about the impact of the vaccine on the economy because now we are hearing about uh, timelines for the vaccination to uh, begin to be given to at least select categories of uh, people so uh, uh, that will surely have some impact on the economy do we have any idea of how that's going to play out well i think uh, uh, it's uh, it's the first set, uh, bit of positive news because that's the only medicine that we have uh, against the, the 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 virus uh, it will uh, uh, it will lower the infection rate i think as and when it gets uh, distributed and is uh, and, and the large parts of the population get uh, get uh, get vaccinated uh so because of that i think the the uh, there is the confidence levels of uh, of of market participants people tend to go up they may open up to more consumption uh, particularly uh, 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 of of definitely of 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 manufacturing uh, goods but also i think of some services as they get vaccinated and savings rate which has exceptionally gone up i think will tend to come down so this is what is expected i mean and beyond this the markets are uh, are always exuberant and they are uh, over exuberant right now uh, on on the news hmm. of the vaccine uh, the the but i think having said that i think you the 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 pre condition is that the there should be mass production and mass distribution and that's not a very small challenge to overcome it's going to take a long time so even when the vaccine comes 
I think it's for the economy to recover. It's it's going to be a very gradual process. Uh, we will see an initial spurt in growth uh, in the next fiscal year because of a very very weak base effect. But beyond that, I think the COVID-19 scars uh, they cannot be erased by the vaccine alone. I mean, vaccine will only prevent it from spreading further. Uh, they will, so we will need more uh, more uh, uh, monetary and fiscal support uh, even after the population gets uh, gets vaccinated. Uh, the the uh, 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 the uh, the our estimate was that economy will suffer a permanent loss uh, in 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 2021 and uh, which will take several years to erase provided we revert back to faster rate of growth and i think uh, the the most of the estimates today point that uh, point out that the gdp level in in 20 122 will be equal to uh, the level of 2019-20 even if you grow at a faster rate in in 21-22 so what it means is that i think there are you have there are many other things that need to be done beyond uh, uh, beyond the vaccine vaccine is the first step then you will again i think the policy will have to remain active in order to support uh, the companies or to support the individuals whose balance sheets have been hit uh, whose incomes have been hit and also, I think uh, uh, beyond that, I think the, the the steps will have to be taken to 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 improve the potential of the economy. So there is a huge task beyond beyond the vaccine. But vaccine is the first set of uh, set of good news, and uh, uh, looks like I think it's uh, as per the 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 news reports. I think it seems to be effective as of now. Uh, that's what the tests are telling us. So this is this is definitely good news, but this doesn't mean that the economy will start shooting up immediately uh, on a sustained basis. I think that will require much, much more work. And uh, since you mentioned uh, policy support, especially fiscal policy support, I have two questions here. One, what is the kind of fiscal policy support that will be needed? Is it going? Uh, is what the kind that we have seen right now? Is that sufficient or something different needs to be done? I, when I say different, I don't necessarily mean more. Uh, I mean, you know, more spending because I know there is limited space. But, you know, what exactly this fiscal stimulus, what shape it should take, one. And two, what is the right time for it? Because the more it, some people say that the more it is delayed, the less effective it will become and the more expensive it will become in terms of, uh, uh, you know, more will have to be done to revive the economy. Uh, or, you know, some, there is another set of people who say that right now spending money is not going to be uh, a very good option because there isn't that much ability uh, in the economy to take that mo money and uh, use it to uh, revive. You can use it to preserve yourself, but, uh, you know, the ability to uh, use that uh, support to revive is, is, is little less right now. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, I'm aware of that debate and only time will tell uh, who is right or who is wrong. Uh, I think given that we have limited uh, fiscal space, I think we'll need to do more with less, I think. So that is what I think if you see the drift of the, the, the fiscal support of the government, I think that's what they are trying to do. I mean, they're trying to incentivize a number of things. They're not directly providing wage support or any, any such thing. Uh, now, I think once once the, the COVID-19 pandemic stabilizes in the sense that the pop, uh, parts of the population get uh, get vaccinated, then I think uh, the you have this is a storm. I mean, the massive storm that you have passed through. So you will be you will be hit very badly and you will require support. So I think my sense is government will have to create demand. I think uh, uh, going ahead, they will have to support uh, from from the from the fiscal side provide uh supported it can be uh, direct support to individuals or i th which i don't think uh, is is finds favor it or it could be uh, create opportunities for people which is i think uh, maybe uh, spend money on infrastructure build roads etc which employ people so you 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 create create productive assets as well as i think provide employment opportunity i think that uh, uh, so that would be and that will also i think from a point of view of raising the potential of the economy will be will be uh, uh, will be uh, a better useful. thing to do yeah useful to do but i think now the point is i think so that is one part i think that okay you you uh, and particularly the rural infrastructure etc are quite labor intensive i mean uh, even road building is quite labor intensive 
uh, beyond that i think i would i would feel that i think some of the sectors which uh, which particularly in the services uh, industry i think they will uh, many of them will disappear i mean the restaurants etc they already closing down uh, but uh, so they they will they will require some hand holding that's my sense i think some sort of uh, incentive or or support so that that uh, that will have to be provided uh, from uh, from uh, by the government and i don't know in what shape it will come but my sense is that right now they are more focused on 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 on, on doing things which might be good from the medium term perspective which is which is i think which is investment and infrastructure creation uh, and i think if you look at the these the second quarter gdp also actually the the private consumption has fallen by 12% or so but in the investment i think still is showing um, only minus 7.5% decline so i think it will it requires some more in uh, prodding or some more analysis to see why this has happened but i think my this also is uh, to some extent a reflection uh, of 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 i think a drift more towards uh, towards uh, investment or creating infrastructure but my sense is you pay, if if you uh, the, the, there's always i think a risk that you run i mean if you don't provide support right now you'll have to provide it later it's like saying that i think the 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 people are borrowing from the banks uh, and i think they are not able to pay off it would become an npa so why not support the people directly right now it's that kind of a so you'll have to uh, there is a there is a cost associated with it and i think my sense is government is going to support uh the 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 economy via infrastructure uh, and, and 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 rural uh, uh, boosting rural demand etc and maybe for some specific sectors which uh, which where the balance sheets have got impaired very badly i think they might come out with some support so the the support in the first half of this fiscal or i think is is essentially largely towards uh, towards the more vulnerable sections i mean if you see uh, more I, pm kisan or whatever it is i mean it's going towards more vulnerable sections it is focused more on the rural economy i think they will also have to think a little bit more about the urban uh, poor who have been impacted pretty badly and there's no direct support system for them true and um, i also you know before i close the conversation i want to ask uh, is it possible that you know the pandemic will have some sort of structural impact on the economy and therefore uh, given that we estimate and measure growth and therefore the recovery in a certain set format uh, this recovery may not uh, you know get captured in our measurement Uh, for some time at least and uh, uh, it may escape measurement so what i'm asking is that you know two things one what could there be some sort of structural impact of the pandemic and two uh, you know if there is then uh, maybe we will underestimate the recovery for some time just purely because we we may it may happen the recovery may be happening in those parts of the economy that we don't measure uh, in our uh, gdp estimation right now well right now i think my sense is that uh, the the formal sector the the registered sector whatever you might like to call it i think their data information is available uh, pretty uh, quickly so to say but for uh, for uh, for the small and medium enterprises for uh, for micro enterprises uh, and for the informal segments even the restaurant sector if you take for that matter i think the information comes in uh, is very sketchy and i think the, the the for manufacturing as i was pointing out earlier the 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 estimation of unregistered also to some extent depends on how the registered manufacturing has played out so that creates a bias there yes. so so i think what what this means is that you will be uh, 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 uh you will not be capturing the growth dynamics uh, properly till the time things stabilize as far as the I, and, and there i think the formal informal part will uh, will 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 play out and and i, I think what happens beyond that uh, i think is, is hard to uh, visualize right now but right now i think my sense is that uh, that the the recovery based on 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 few um, uh, parts of the economy may uh may may be overestimating growth to some extent that's a possibility right on that note let me thank you for taking out time to uh, speak to me about the recovery 
Thank you very much for uh, for having me on this program. Thank you.